Welcome and good morning, fight fans. This is the Sunday morning scrap. I am your host, GK, the fight analyst, and I'm here to recap a great night of fights that we saw yesterday at UFC Fight Island 7. And wow, what a fight card to start 2021. Uh, I guess, uh, first off, we have to start with the main event, right? We have to jump into the sensational performance of Max Blessed Holloway. People were saying, oh, maybe he's on his last legs. Uh, maybe this is time for the, the newcomer, the guy in Calvin Cater, to really put a stamp in the featherweight division. Nope, this is not, that is not what happened. Uh, it was kind of the same thing in the Brian Ortega fight. People thought Ortega was the, the next guy up, the new breed in this division, and he showed that Max is still the best of the best. And it, the crazy part is he's just hit his prime. He's only 28 years old. He's been in, the, in this game for a very long time, and he's just hitting his prime. He's just hitting his peak, and it's just insane. Um, he's landed more strikes in just that one fight than two UFC champions in their entire UFC careers. That's Davidson Figueredo and Wiley Zhang. Um yeah, he it just it was like a 465 strikes, I believe, he landed, which is also the most strikes landed in a single fight combined uh between two fighters in a single UFC fight. That is absurd he put on an absolute clinic he made calvin C cater look like an amateur that he shouldn't even be in the, the ufc which is not the case um max is just that good uh but yeah he looked he looked amazing the best he's ever looked um but then again i, I see a lot of people talking about oh if that's the same max that fought volk it wouldn't have even been close but the thing is that is the same max that fought volk Everybody uh, talk about, no, it's not, no, it's not. But it is. It's a different game plan, different mindset. That Max is the same Max that fought Dustin Poirier. It's the same Max that fought Brian Ortega. It's the same exact Max. The thing is, with Volkanovski, he had the perfect, perfect game plan in both fights. He threw over 200 leg kicks between those two fights. He attempted eight takedowns in just his last fight against max so he knows how to stifle the volume and then the way to stifle the volume is have some something else you have to you can't just box and calvin calvicator showed it you can't just box against max he's gonna light you up volkanovsky is throwing leg kicks he's attempting takedowns he's making max can't just come forward and just throw hands he can't do it so, yes, uh, I do think Max, um, you know, he's still one of the best. But, like, if Volkanovski and Max fight again, it's going to be another close fight. It's not going to be a fight that we just saw last night. It's not going to happen. It's just not. Um, but either way, you can't take anything away from Max. Max deserves another crack at Volkanovski at, if Volkanovski beats Ortega. It doesn't really matter who wins. Max is next in line. He has to be next in line. He's He is one of the best 145 pound fighters in the world. Period. Point. Fucking blank. Um, the dude is absolute phenomenal. Uh, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I've never seen anyone like other than the Ortega fight. I've never seen anyone get beat down so bad. And then I felt bad for Cater because the dude's tough, and I'm a big fan of his. But it wasn't his night, and you know he tried. And he he wanted to get that number one spot. You know, I guess it was just a too big of a step up too soon going from somebody like Jeremy Stevens and Dan Ige to Max Holloway. That's such a massive step up in competition. And it, and it really showed how much better Max is than everybody. And um, in this division, I think there are tiers. Um, I think Max is tier one and right there with him is Volkanovski. I think those two guys are better than every single person in the division and everybody else is just a tier uh, below them. That's, that's the Ortegas. That's the Zabits. That's the, uh, the Korean zombies. Those type of fighters are just a step below them, but those two guys are, are on another level. And I think a trilogy fight would be phenomenal. I do think Volkanovski goes ahead and beats Ortega and we get that trilogy fight. Then we can really, you know, really see what happens um, 
again, you know, maybe Holloway doesn't get screwed over by judges this time, but uh, it's going to be a good fight to see. I really want to see it. What are my thoughts on Ricky Simone? Uh, yeah, um, being from Belgium, I'm excited. Let's put on a clinic. Yeah, I know. Um, as far as that that fight goes between Ricky Simone and Gastano, um, man, that's a that's a tough one for Gastano to come in on short notice, on a week's notice, no less, um, to fly to Abu Dhabi and fight. You know, a fringe top fifteen competitor in the bantamweight division, in a fighter, and Ricky Simone, who has to, who can go fifteen minutes with no problem, who can pick you up and slam you down as many times as he wants. The dude is an absolute uh, ball of fury. The only knock on him is, you know, he is hittable. So Cassano, if he does have some power in his hands, he, he has it. He does have a chance to really, uh, you know, crack his chin. So it's it's going to be a good fight. But if I'm choosing, um, I'm going to have to go with uh, Ricky Simone on that on that fight. But then again, guys, you can uh, that breakdown is going to be coming out uh, possibly tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, or Tuesday, the latest uh, for the breakdown for Wednesday's card. So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, getting back to um, yesterday's card, I'm just going to go down the list of you know the fights and kind of my thoughts on, on everything. So let's start on the, the first fight of the card was um, an absolute barn burner between Austin Lingo and Jacob Kilburn. Uh, Kilburn looked... Uh, you know, tough as nails. Um, he just couldn't get the job done. Also, Lingo looked phenomenal. Um, his combinations were great. That one-two was landing the entire fight. He's got some serious power in his hands. I'm not sure how Kilburn was able to withstand all of that, uh, you know, damage throughout 15 minutes. It was just crazy. Dude is extremely tough. I got to give kudos to him to hang in there for a whole 15 minutes. But Lingo um, showed that he belongs in the UFC. He proved me wrong. And it showed that Zalal is, you know, a top, a top-notch top fighter. And uh, that's why he made him look silly. But Lingo is – that dude can fight. That dude is a really good fighter. So um, I'm excited to see uh, what's next for him. Do you think Kato would ever fight for the title? Um, I don't know, man. Um. It's going to be a hard fight for him to come back from. I, I know he's going to probably have to take uh, some time off um, after that type of fight. I would say he we, we won't see him to the later portion of 2021, probably, at least midway through uh, 2021. Um, but, yeah, he's going to have to climb his way back because, you know, coming off a loss against Max, he's now going to have to fight, you know, anywhere between five uh, – rank fires between five and eight five and nine because guys are want to are gonna want to come up and and take that number six spot from Cater and uh and him coming off a loss he has no ground to stand on to be fighting for the title or fighting guys above him so he's gonna have to fend off some of these guys that are coming up trying to take his number away from him so um I don't know I I, I hope they still push him to the top and fight guys in the top five. But I feel like he's going to have to go through the gauntlet of guys trying to take away his uh, number six spot. Got to have your coffee on Sunday morning. Um, but yeah, next up we have a fight that was in the band and weight division between Vanessa Mello and Sarah Morris in a stinker of a fight. Um, I don't really have much to say in that fight. Uh, both of these girls missed, I think, oh, three, four hundred strikes between the two of them. They were just throwing at thin air. Um, it's a fight that I don't ever want to see again. Uh, it's a fight that I didn't bet on for that reason. Uh, and then Sarah Morris was a minus 200 favorite, and I, I can't believe that, and I can't believe people would actually go ahead and place their money on Sarah Morris at that crazy price point. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I don't have much to say on that uh, fight because it was just terrible all around. Uh, I was getting beer during that fight. Next fight was uh, a really good fight at uh, in welterweight division between Ramazan Amiv and David Zawada. It was a very, very close fight. Uh, Could have really gone either way. Um, that's pretty much most of Amiv's fights. 
he starts off strong with his wrestling. He tends to fade toward the later portion of, uh, you know, the second and third rounds. Exactly what happened. Uh, Zawada, but that, I think that cut really did him in for Zawada. Um, and I think he, he ended strong in round three, but I don't think it, it wasn't good enough to get the W, but it was a, it was a great back and forth fight between the two and Zawada showed that he's, he's tough as nails. Uh, he's got some really good striking, and I think he's definitely improved. Even though he's one in three, um, I think he deserves another shot in the UFC going against someone like Amiv and really fighting him tooth and nail to the end and only losing a razor close uh, split decision. So it was, it was definitely a really good fight. So our next fight was a, another split decision fight between uh, two heavyweights in Justin Taffa and Carlos Felipe. Um that fight, I think they should have gave it to Justin Taffa. Um, I really do. I know Felipe hurt him, hurt Taffa in round two. Um, so he got round two. Taffa definitely won round one. And when it comes to the third, I think he landed more. Um, he controlled him against the fence more. And even the last flurry of the, uh, of the round, he landed the more shots and he evaded more of the shots in that flurry at the end of round three. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I didn't bet on the fight mainly because a lot of people were betting on the underdog. Uh, and normally when you bet on the underdog and the public is on the underdog, they tend to not win. And that was another case right here. If you watch my breakdown, uh, you would have seen, you have heard, never bet on an underdog where the public is betting because they tend to lose because they're underdogs for a reason, right? Taffa looks like Hunt. With, yeah, no, I agree. Taffa looked exactly like Mark Hunt with good kicks. Um, he looked, I think he looked really, really good. He was only four and one. So this, that was only his sixth professional fight in a fight where I think he should have won. Um, and he looked composed. He looked very, very good. Those kicks were uh, phenomenal. Uh, I'm like, when the hell did he learn to kick? Because he wasn't kicking in the other fights, but. The dude is a powerhouse. Uh, he looked composed. He looked really good. He looked really relaxed. Uh, but, you know, Carlos Felipe did what he had to do and got the job done. I just don't like how he goes and talks all this crap. Winning decisions. A split decision. He gets so hyped. And he wins another decision. I mean, while all these other heavyweights are getting absolute dominant performances and knockouts and all and finishes, Carlos Felipe is just happy to be there. And getting hyped up after uh, a split decision win, but yeah, all right, let's let's move on from that. The last fucking shit show of a fight. Um, yeah, and then we had a fight in the women's bantamweight division with newcomer Jocelyn Edwards and Yanan Wu. Uh, Jocelyn Edwards looked looked very impressive, very impressive, uh, very very impressive. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna get. Let me get my boy in here. He he wants to come and talk some fights with us for a bit. My good friend. Sorry, guys. Yeah, as far as that Jocelyn Edwards fight, um, she looked very impressive. She absolutely dominated Wu the entirety of the fight. Uh, her strike rate looks good. Her um, her jujitsu looked really good as well. Um, she looked she looked impressive. Um, she could be, you know, a decent a decent competitor in the 125 pound division. It's a very very shallow division, so she could really um, she could really you know make a, a name for herself in that division. If she just if she fights like she just did, I definitely think she could uh, definitely make um, make a run in the division. I don't think she's gonna really she's not gonna really do much as far as like going for the belt. But I was very uh, very impressed with her performance. She she looked good everywhere. She even got hit with a, a good shot and she came back, um, moved forward, and that's so I was uh, I was very impressed there. So. It was a, uh, it was it wasn't as bad as the first female fight. Let's put it that way. All right.
Carl discussing tonight's fights. Tafa Hardy. Tafa Hardy would be a fun fight. I think that'd be a good fight. Those two dudes are just banging out. Unfortunately, I think Hardy would win just because he of his length and that. But hold on, let me get my boy Joe Danger on on here with us. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? Sorry for uh, the delay. Um, different time zones, so happy to happy to be here. No, no, no problem, man. I'm just let me just get this up. Okay, there we go. Now we can hear you a little bit better. But yeah. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Scrap. Glad to have you with us. You know, recapping some of these uh, these fights that went down. I know you were chatting with me throughout the entire card and through our roller coaster of a fucking night. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we went through. You know, pretty much of the prelims. Now we're um, getting into the swing of things where everything just went fucking downhill from for me uh, from a fucking betting perspective <laughs> but as far as the card goes this is where it fucking took off in the main card um in that first fight with punahali soriano and Dus uh, dushko todorovic wow what a fucking fight what do you think about that one yeah, I can't say that I was expecting that to happen. Um, I, I was pretty, I was pretty stoked that it did happen. I had Soriano in uh, quite a few of my lineups, uh, oddly enough, just because that was the way that the the math worked out. But um, yeah, the O had to go, and unfortunately, it was not. Um, you know, I it you you said that you know you really liked the way that the, the main of like the main card took off. You know, for me, I kind of prefer it to be a little bit more like s spread out. Like I like some fights to go the distance and some to go like the. It's odd when it goes from all the fights going the distance to like right. then all of a sudden it's like okay, first 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 round knockout, first round knockout, first round knockout. The pacing is it's like watching a movie. You know, like you want the pacing to kind of be somewhat level. Um, and this is kind of where it took a weird turn, I think, for the for the viewers. And UFC, you know, they tend to scramble and throw up these weird packages of, uh, you know, stuff that, you know, us, uh, you know, big fans we've we've seen or we've heard a million times. Um, but yeah, it was it, it. I was super impressed with Soriano. Um, the other guy, Todd Todd Toto Rodovic, is that he said? Uh, I think it's Todor Todorovic. I think I don't know what who he he had some crazy head movement, but then it um I was like holy shit, this guy should should, should box, and then like uh, obviously we we found out why he he doesn't box. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean it, that's the Anderson Silva shit. Remember? Yeah. Uh, he did the move. Uh, he just did the the head back movement, and then he got clipped right on the chin, and that was all she wrote. Yeah. That was crazy. I, I was. I was very impressed because uh, I wanted to see more from Soriano. I didn't think he was technically sound in order to, you know, get that done. But you know, those winging hooks. Finally, one of them was able to land. He landed not once, not twice, but three times, and eventually uh, they stopped the fight. Uh, very impressed there. But like you were saying about all these knockouts and that, if those knockouts didn't happen. I don't think the fights would have uh, ended on time for ABC because uh, there was a tweet saying that they just ended the fights 52 seconds before they were about to get cut off. Wow. Because they were, because they said if they didn't finish the fights uh, on time, ABC was going to come cut them off regardless. And then they were going to, then you probably would have lost watching the, the rest of the Holloway card. Imagine them cutting you off when that Holloway performance is going on. Yeah. Hey, Holy if you shit. if you guys want to watch the last three rounds, tune in to ESPN 14, you know, like that's yeah. so wild. But uh, to, to kind of the, the, what I thought was crazy about this, this, this particular fight was that, you know, he lost his mouthpiece and like, this has been happening a lot lately is that the mouthpiece gets knocked out and then they lose it. And I was like, you know, uh, we had we had money on the the over, right? Like, uh, yeah. I, I was, was like, like, take your time, just take yeah. your time. I was like, dude, <laughs> do not find your mouthpiece. Like, <laughs> and 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 then like, but it, I think it the and I I told you this uh, live, or I I think I told our our group. Um, I was like, 
th- I, I was so thankful, but I could tell that uh, Herb Dean was just like, you know, he made the decision after the second, not the second, like kind of direct hit, like that he was going to call the next one. And I was like, because it was just like, boom, boom, boom. And then it was, he like he didn't even like let anything happen. He was just like, this fight's over. You could tell that he had already made the decision to, you know, once once that third third knockout happened, he was like, this yeah. is it. But the, the thing that sucks is, I mean, like he wasn't out, but no. the thing is, he just he just didn't want him to get any more damage, and I can I can understand it. I I don't give any fault to him um, for stopping it, but sucks from a betting perspective because we had uh they had the over, but um you know it is what it is. Uh, great performance by Soriano. I'm happy that he got the win. Uh, I kind of liked him more as a fighter than Dushko, but um. You know, on the wrong end of another bet there, and then we keep going. We'll keep rolling on the wrong ends of the bet coming up on this next one with uh, Joaquin Buckley and Alessio De Chirico. Um, man, wow, uh, what a shitty way! Shit, what a shitty way to lose for uh, for Buckley. You're talking about a guy that everybody wants to fade. Um, betting wise, and of course, the time to fade him, you're like, Oh no, this, this is not the time to fade him yeah. against the Kiriko, who doesn't beat anyone. He's coming off three straight losses, he, he never finishes anybody. And there we go, he gets the, the head kick knockout and then completely just derails the hype train. <laughs> and the funny part is, Dana White goes into his locker room <laughs> afterwards. And they're like, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> and and then if you didn't see the post fight uh, um, scrum with him, he's like, I'm not doing this interview because you guys don't interview the losers. I'm like, motherfucker, do you know you just de- you just concussed the guy that you just like you just beat? How the fuck do you want him to come out here and talk to these guys after getting knocked the fuck out? Like. Are you, like he's just salty because he's he's lost like almost every fight in his UFC career and he doesn't get interviewed and I, and I guess I get it but I mean like you got to think about it logically you're not gonna get an interview if you lost a fucking fight I mean like what the fuck and he just left he's like yeah. I'm not doing this interview because you don't you don't uh, interview uh, the losers huh yeah uh, you know I thought maybe that was some like translation thing and then like. It just was so odd. It, like, here's your time to shine, you know, finally. Right. And, and you're, like, not going to take that opportunity to call out, you know, a matchup that might work for you. Your your team is probably pissed off right. because it's like, dude, we worked, we busted our ass for you to put you in this position. And you're not going to, you're not going to say anything. Like, you, you, you finally get to be interviewed. And it's like. It, uh, and the, the guy, he's so boring. Like I, right. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of these. Uh, I, I like the idea of these uh, Italian fighters coming up, but it's like, dude, they're, they're also interesting. They, they call out other people. Like they, they're, they're doing it the right way. So I'm not sure why. It was just so, it was so odd. Like it, you know, like I think I made the point last night. I like watching the intros and the, uh, the walkouts because it kind of gets me hyped for the fight. Like it helps build a fan base. And then uh, this is another thing, a, a good interview. I mean, look at Kevin Holland, a good interview can put you on the map. And um, it, it, and especially coming off, you know, you, three losses, right? Um, right. Yeah. Three back to back losses. Dude, take your, like, this might be your last chance to even get an interview. Like so right. odd. So odd. Yeah. No, I agree. He doesn't know how to market himself. Uh, and there is a good chance he still gets cut even with the win because of the fact that he's being a prick about it. Like, you don't want to get interviewed. You tell Dana, what the fuck do you want? Yes, we know they set you up to lose, but you just won a fight. Like, come on. Yeah. You're lucky you're even there. You're lucky you even have a job with the UFC. Don't be all pity because they wanted you to lose and they gave you a fight that they wanted you to lose. I mean, come on, man. That you know, that's the name of the game. That's how matchmaking goes. That's how fighting goes. You are the one that has to prove them wrong that you're better than who they wanted to win. Yeah. That's just the name of the game. You don't be uh, throw a pity party about it. Yeah. And he just he was just salty the entire time. The the what would uh, and you you mentioned this too like uh about about this particular fight. Um 
like B- Buckley, like we've we're all just waiting for the moment to fade him. I remember we we bet him back in the day, and we back one second, but keep going. Okay, we bet him back in the day during you know the LFA days, and um, I'm I'm a big fan of his. Obviously, I didn't think that he was going to beat uh, Kevin Holland. I also didn't think he was going to beat Impa, but um, you know, like I definitely thought that he at least had it in him to to take on this fight, and uh, it obviously didn't go our way. Um, but why, why Garrett's away, I wanted to, uh, we can, uh, I'll touch on the prelims just because I wasn't, you know, here earlier. Um, let's see the, okay. the lingo fight. Uh, I saw that dude fight in Houston live and I knew, I knew that he was gonna, I knew he was going to come through just because of his style. Uh, I was super impressed with, uh, you know, his chain, the changes he made to, uh, to, to win, to win like he did in the, especially in the fashion that he did. The guy just never quit moving. Um, but yeah, just just to cap off the Buckley fight, I just said that you know we've been betting him since the LFA days, and you know it's you know we're just waiting for the right time to bet against him, and obviously this was it. But you know who 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 would have who would have known? Yeah, I know. I mean, like this was like okay, this is an easy fight. They gave him a layup. I mean, Takirko hasn't beaten anybody. He's coming off three straight losses. He hasn't finished anybody. He gets his first finish against him. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I was like, you like seriously? I was like, seriously? Yeah. And, and it was such, I, such a fluke. Like the the kick, like it almost seemed like he he did it on accident, maybe. It was just so weird. The whole thing was just odd. And it just clipped him on the top of the head and then it just put him down. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And yeah. Buckley's built like a fucking brick house. So like I would just like it's just so to see that man tumble was like the weirdest thing, especially from such a weird, I don't know, a weird. He, his, his his legs fell uh, bent backwards under underneath him. Like that's how bad he fell. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I was pretty bad. Um, You know, it is what it is. And the, tr- the hype train has been derailed. And, and then I know Dana White's pissed off. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Like, Fuck. You had one job. He had one <laughs> fucking job. He's like, now I gotta pay this asshole. I don't even want him here. We're about to cut him, and now here we are. Yeah. He's like, you had one fucking job. Uh, but yeah, what, what the hell else? Oh, there. In that next fight was another, hmm, another one and, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the welterweight division between uh, Jing Liang, uh, Li Jing Liang, and uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio. I fucking knew to not bet on santiago two-year layoff 34 years old multiple injuries has a fought in forever and he's not a grappler so he gives J- uh, uh lee the opportunity to f- to fight him the way it- lee wants to fight and it's a strike and that counter left hook was just fucking a thing of beauty. Holy shit. That was so good. Right on the button, right on the chin, put him out. And it was there the whole fight, too. Like he yeah. Lee was having his way with him, man. It was it was I, I actually I'm a big fan of Lee. And like uh, you know, I think before the fight I said, Man, he like he has a strong ass head. Like something about his head is just it's so like he can take it, he can take a beating. But it, you know, if you can know early on if he's gonna lose the fight, like uh, I mean, you can look at his past fights, and you if they're not going his way in the beginning, then they're not gonna go his way the entire fight. That's just his his style. Um, but with this one, with Ponzinibbio coming off the layoff, you could just tell that Lee was it was his pace. He he was doing what he wanted to. Um, he looked good. He looked he looked strong. He looked healthy. And uh, Ponzinibbio did not, man. He, you could the ring. I hate fucking saying it, but the ring rust was there, and yeah. uh, immediately I knew. I was like, man, this was not the bet yeah. to yeah. make. I was, yeah. I was chasing I, like a motherfucker after after Buckley, big time. I was looking forward to betting at, um, you know, after round one because I was like, hopefully I can still get some dog money on Lee. But obviously, we didn't make it out the first round. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. We you kind of saw it in um, Ponza's game that he he just didn't have it yet. I mean, he he needed he needed a whole five minutes to get acclimated to fighting again because he was still nerve. It looked like he was still nervous in there uh, to get hit, and finally when he did get hit, he's like, "Okay, that hurt, that hurt," and then it, it put him away. So um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I kind of knew not to bet that, but. 
Oh well, shit happens. Yeah. With shit with happens. the with the way that the the Buckley fight went, you know, we were put in a position to assume, you know, that the the, worst. the, odd, the, the odds were right, and then yeah. uh, obviously, you know, that doesn't always happen. MMA got MMA. Yeah, right. all, yeah <laughs> MMA was MMA. I mean, tons of dogs pulled pulled it out uh, on that card too. And you talk about like over half the card was dogs winning. Yeah. So whoever went dog hunting on that card made a shit ton of money. Um, you know, and mo- ma- that means the majority of the public got fucking smashed, and yeah. majority of the guys on Twitter got smashed too because you know you're thinking easy fights are gonna are gonna get easy wins. Nope, that didn't happen. Yeah, the only yeah. the only dog that I thought was gonna like I pull pull it off, you know, was Tafa, man. And I know you touched on that earlier, but he he won that fight, man. Yeah. Rounds one and three, yeah, easily. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, yeah, that, like, that, that pissed me off. Like I said, like I knew not to bet. Like I bet him a little bit, but like I knew not to give him out as a play because of the fact that majority of the public was on him. And for some reason, the majority of the public are on a dog. Yeah. They never win. They don't win. I don't know what it is. They just don't win. It's weird. I don't know what it is, but, you know, public dogs just don't win. But um, I. But the thing is, he should have won. That's, that's the thing yeah. that sucks the most. He definitely should have won that, and he obviously didn't. Uh, but yeah, the the next fight was a great fight uh, between two veterans in the co-main event between uh, Carlos Condon and Matt Brown. Um, yeah, finally I got something right, you mm-hmm. know, on, on the card. Uh, the one I was mainly the most confident in, Condit came out there and did what he had to do. It was a little uh, hairy in the beginning of the fight, but uh, Matt Brown eventually. Um, gassed out after that first round of grappling and the crazy part is he was controlling it for over three minutes and he still lost the first round yeah because <laughs> he did absolutely nothing uh, i think condit landed over 20 more strikes at him while he was on his back versus uh brown was just laying on top of him so that was um that was interesting for him to get 30 27 in a fight where he was completely controlled for the first round so um but i was very um I was impressed because I think I think Condit still has some a fight left of him. Um, he definitely you, you give him a, a stylistic matchup against another striker in the division. Oh, he's gonna put on a crazy good fight. Uh, win or lose, he's gonna put on like a fight of the night type of fight. Um, yeah, and I want to see him back in there. And Matt Brown should definitely retire. I'm I'm done mm-hmm. seeing him. Well, I, I I we we joked about this leading into the fight about how. Matt Brown said that he was the best he's ever been. And it's like, dude, you can't like, what, the, what, what are you talking about, man? Like you're coming off a retirement and you're coming off like multiple uh, surgeries. And uh, it's just so, so like, I, I hate to keep going back to this, but it was like just such an odd move to even say that, you know, maybe pull out a dictionary or the source uh, Matt Brown or UFC or whoever. It just, it, maybe I need to do that. Cause I keep saying odd, but uh I I I was on uh, Carlos go, again on the Court McGee fight too. Like I I knew he had more left in him after seeing that. Um, didn't he fight Neil Bagme a couple like couple fights ago? Yeah, and, and uh, that was like his comeback fight. But uh, I got I got him on, with Court McGee at plus money. I just I I knew that Court was not not yeah. ready for that, you know. And like even with this fight too, I was. I, I know Brown can be a little scary. You know, he he all, always ha- is a threat, you know, with regardless of who, he, who he's fighting. But um, this once once I saw him take him to the ground and then not do anything with it, I was like, OK, we have this in the bag. Yeah, and that that round was easily Carlos. And like and I was like, OK, well, he, now we know that he can win standing up. And if we get to the ground, he's going to still out 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 match him on the ground like even if even if he's in top control he ain't uh brown's not doing anything with it so i was pretty happy because i was like i was already counting my winnings at that point you're not you know not supposed to do that but i was just like hell yeah this is this is happening i would love if they fed diego like for diego's last fight to to carlos like i think that'd be great yeah i think i think that'd be a good like um going away party for diego 
well, yeah, for both of them, really. I mean, like, you know, who who's to say that Carlos isn't looking, you know, I know he has that coffee company and he it, they're both getting up there. It's just a cool, like, fight that probably should have happened like 10 years ago. I don't know if it maybe already has happened, but that would be a cool, like, going away fight for, for everybody, the fans as well. Kind of yeah. like this fight, you know, the, 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 like this fight was... I thought it was weird that it was booked as the co-main, but you know, I had a really good time watching it, especially when when he took uh, did that really weird takedown, and it was oh yeah, freaking yeah. badass. Like it was, that like was... A, it was like a scissor sweep, I think. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, but it was cool. It was just like this is like some Mortal Kombat shit, and y'all you know, like like this is I don't know for even like the casual viewer, it, it was it was entertaining. Oh, it was great. It was it was a fantastic fight. It it led it was as good as we thought it was going to be years ago i thought it was a great fight even though they're both older they're past their prime still a great back and forth brawl a great battle between two veterans of the sport um i definitely want to see carlos conda back in there i don't know about matt brown um he's still a good fighter but i just think everything's just i think it's way past him now he's 40 years old he's got a gym to run he's got kids he's got a life outside of fighting carlos conda it's still He's still working. He's still, yeah. he's, this is still his life. Um, he doesn't have, I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't have life outside of the, the octagon, but I mean, he still trains every single day. This, he's still fighting for a job. So I see him getting another contract with the UFC, probably another three or four fight contract. And I hope we see him get favorable matchups again. I want to see him in a striking matchup. Don't give him wrestlers. There's no reason to give him grapplers. Give him a fight where he can you know, impress and have a good fight, win or lose. You know, that's the type of fight you give Carlos Condit now. He's not looking, he's not going to be a champion, but he could fight tooth and nail with anybody in a striking match. Um, and I definitely want to see him in another uh, stylistic matchup, kind of like a Matt Brown, even though Matt Brown went super grapple heavy, which is like the first time ever in his fucking career, which is insane. I guess they really wanted to go in there and win the fight versus going in there and, you know, fight like Matt Brown. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess since he got knocked out and like majority of his last, you know, couple fights, they wanted him to avoid getting knocked out again. So that's why they did that. And then on to the main event, I talked about this earlier, but man, what a fucking performance by Max blessed Holloway. Holy shit. I didn't get to watch it live. I had to watch it later on that night because I had to had to go out. But holy shit. Holy <laughs> shit. I can't say that enough. That was super, super impressive. Even more impressive than the Ortega fight because Calvin Cater is a much better striker than Brian Ortega was back then. Um, and to do what he did, man, holy shit. But then I was also talking about everybody's like, oh, if that is the same Max. If that same Max fought Volkanovski, oh, it would be a different story. It's the same Max. That's what people don't understand. It's the same Max. The, if you notice, that Max is the same Max that fought Dustin Poirier. It's the same Max that fought Brian Ortega. It's the same Max that fought Frankie Edgar. It's the same Max. The reason why Max didn't fight that way against Volkanovski is because he couldn't. Volkanovski game plan perfectly against Max in both fights. He threw over 200 leg kicks mm -hmm. against Max in those two fights. He went for takedowns against Max. You can't let Max just strike with you and box with you because the same thing is going to happen against Calvin Cater. The same thing is going to happen against Frankie Edgar. The same thing is going to happen against Brian Ortega. The same thing is going to happen. You have to do something different. Volk did something different. He was kicking the lead leg, making him work and uh, on the takedowns. He can't just come forward and just throw down because he's going to take leg kicks and he's going to have to defend takedowns. So if all that happens, you can't just come forward and just throw hands. Yeah. You, you're talking about uh, Max Holloway only threw 50 strikes in round one against Volkanovski in his last fight. He threw, I think, 150 in round one against Calvin Cater. Big difference. Yeah. And then Volkanovski threw 20 leg kicks in that first round. Cater threw two or three. So there's a big difference. And then if they fight again, the fight's going to be close again. It's not going to be Max doing what he did against Calvin Cater. 
it's gonna be another close fight. Um, do I give the edge to Max? Absolutely, but it doesn't mean he's gonna run away with it and do what he did against Calvin Cater or Brian Ortega or Frankie Edgar or so on and so forth. So what do you what'd you take away from that fight? Yeah, this is the one fight you probably should have watched live. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I it, I agree with you um a hundred percent. You know, it's I early on I bet this fight uh Max Holloway just because of the odds. Uh, one sixty was super disrespectful. Yeah, and I was just like, dude, yeah, I don't win or lose. That's that's incredible odds. Yeah, um, you know, also, uh, Cater is a late starter. We all know that. So I figured, you know, the odds would just get bigger after round one and two. If anything, Cater might clip him in three and four or five. But um, obviously that wasn't the case. Uh, I was happy, you know, like uh, I'm. I'm also excited to see uh, Halway fight uh, Vol Volkanovski again. Uh, do I give the edge to Volkanovski or do I give it to Halloway? Um Honestly, I, I have no idea, man. I round like the first fight was obviously Volk. Like he he had the game plan, like you said. Uh, game or excuse me, the second fight, Volk won. But um, you know, I had money on Volk, so I'm cool with <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, <me> too. <laughs> but um, but like I, I I give the edge to Holloway just like in that particular fight, just because it seemed like he did a lot more per round. But um, that's just me. You know, every analyst sees it a different way. I'm not an analyst. I'm a, you know, I just watch it. And, uh, you know, I thought Holloway took the fight. I'm cool with the outcome. It doesn't, it honestly doesn't really phase me one way or the other. Um, if the third fight was to happen, I don't know who I'd bet. I really, I really truly do not know. It would really depend on the odds. Um, you know, I'd love to see some, some plus money on Holloway, but because of this performance, the public is a huge fan of Halloway right now, so I highly yeah. doubt that would happen. We'd probably get even money. I think um, I think it really depends if Volkanovski goes in and starches Ortega. If he really goes in and dominates Ortega, um, then we might get Holloway at plus money. But if Volkanovski goes in and just wins a decision, another decision like he did against Holloway, then we might even get Holloway as a favorite coming into that matchup. Yeah. Well, in the public, uh, most of the public... I would say thinks that Holloway won that second fight anyway. Right. So it's, it's, it's really hard to say um, this fight, man, you know, honestly, this is kind of how I saw this going the same with the wonder boy fight. You know, I kind of saw that happening the way it went down too. Uh, I've just been getting lucky in these main events. The odds have, have been favorable. And I was just like, whatever, you know, I'll make this, this last fight a little more interesting just for, for myself. Right. Um, sure I don't know. Same thing, but you know, it, 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 we had well with Wonder Boy. We had it. We had the we had the decision prop. But I was I just kept adding every round. I was like, this is this is he's just rolling, man. The only thing that I think probably could have fucked that up would have been like if he was fighting um, Pettis or something. But uh, yeah. I, you know, Pettis and uh, Old Boy aren't the same. You know, like right. so it, it, he'll just take a beating, just like just like uh, Cater did, um, which. You, you you hit the nail on the head. Cater is a, a fucking great, you know, stand up guy. And but he Max is just better. He's just a better dude at, at what at what he was doing. And that's kind of how I saw it going. You know, did I think it was going to happen in as devastating a, a fashion? Hell no. Like that was that was just impressive all around. Did and you know? Did you hear him talking to him during the fight, too? Yeah, I thought that was a little weird. Like, uh, you he's know, like, who's the best boxer? Who's the best boxer? <laughs> it's like they were fucking. Like, that's like, tell me, tell me, I'm the best. Like, <laughs> like, so, like, come on. Like, I will say this though too. I did. I I saw some shades of McGregor in in Holloway. Like the way that he was moving. Like the way he was kicking. Like he added a lot to his game. Yeah. And I like he was moving just like McGregor. Like like there was. There was a it made me more excited about this coming up Saturday. I was like, okay, well, you know, we get to see the real the real deal coming up on Saturday. But it was cool to see how the way it was like almost like he the evolution of his game, you know, like sure. and, and that was another th reason I was so comfortable betting him was because I was like, okay, this is the this guy beat Aldo, like this guy, this guy's beat so many, so many people. And um, I'm one of the few people that did bet against him whenever he fought Poirier. But uh, so at least I guess I know how to just bet Holloway fights ultimately. But um, 
Uh, yeah, uh, I just I knew it was going to go down that way. Did I know it was going to go go down and as devastating as it did? Hell, hell no. But um, I'll it's say it, I really liked the those DK those DK points. I don't know if you saw, but I think it no. was like it was like almost three hundred. Like it was like two forty. Holy shit! And cra- like he almost landed five hundred strikes. Yeah, five hundred. That's you're talking like I think he landed almost more than everyone combined on the entire car <laughs> it, it's it's wild it's wild. the and and you said the um the uh that you were talking about him talking i don't know he was he it was it was weird dude like i thought it was cool like a little bit like hey we we're you're having fun in there but um after a while it just kind of becomes like this like show and like uh, it's unsportsmanlike conduct you know i'm all for being you know being an asshole but you know, Cater's not that guy. You know, do it, do it to Volk. You know, do it to someone you have some beef with. I, I, I guess it's because uh, people were doubting him coming into the fight, and yeah. he was just pissed that he thinks he still should be the champion. You know, and I totally get it. So he just wanted to go in there and prove to everyone that he's the fucking best. He's the best striker at 145 pounds, one of the best strikers in the entire UFC or in the world. It's just crazy. I watched that performance and I'm like, how does someone get so good? I don't yeah. know how how can you get that good? How can you move the way he does? How does he know when he's going to strike? He's able to move back and fire with four, five, six piece combinations. Like Calvin Calvin was throwing one strike to four or five of uh Holloways. Like he'll throw one, he'll come back with four or five piece. I'm like, yeah. shit. I just don't know how someone can get to that level. And he's he's on that other level. And I was super fucking impressed. I'm excited yeah. to see a, a rematch with him and Volkanovski uh, one, at one point. Cal Gator said he was the best boxer during the promo. Yeah, and that's probably why, you know. But, he, you know, the thing is with the promo, they want you to say some shit like that to build up the fight. In reality, he's not going to be going around on the street saying, I'm the best boxer in the UFC. It's just, you know, he's just cutting a promo. He's trying to, you know, ramp up the fight. Um, and I totally get that. And, you know, they want him to say something that will get Max a little ticked off. And that's what he said. You know, same thing with he said he was going to finish him. Um, but in reality, he's not. He's not gonna go on the street and say I'm gonna finish every fucking fighter I face. Um, but it's the main event, you yeah. know. You have to cut a promo where you know it gets an entertaining, you know, and that's what he did. But yeah, he he said the the senior thing too about how Max was the freshman, and I was just like, that's a really weird promo to cut. Like, hey, I'm a senior. Like, I I wear my letter jacket, and like <laughs> uh, like it's just so so strange. But even Max was responding to that in the ring. He's like, oh, I'm the freshman. Oh, I'm the, you know, like, oh, I'm doing it. Like, okay, dude, like, it's not, this is not WWE. But I think he kind of realized, like, so the fact that he was able to talk shit and then put his shit together, right. like, uh, cohesively, and then, like, he transitioned from talking to, to Cater to talking to DC or talking to the, uh, the, That's the, crazy. the team. So I think he, like, mid mid ass whooping realized that he was talking to the wrong guy and uh you know that's something that maybe felipe needs to exercise because uh <laughs> or just maybe shut his mouth because i'm getting i'm like i'm getting tired of just listening to that guy talk shit because he like you said earlier that guy has no reason to talk shit um exactly you're winning least, decisions you're winning decisions and a decision yeah. that you probably shouldn't even won well, yeah, and there's a big difference between a five round decision and a three round decision, and a uh, you know also a decision and a split decision, and uh, I, at least with this, we know that it was deserved. Um, right. I don't know, man, but uh, but yeah, I, it, I, that was that was it was pretty cool. I, I like, and obviously these guys, like you said, they're just cutting a promo. Like Max is also trying to you know, rebuild his brand and his rep and, uh, you know, not that he really needs to, right. but, um, but yeah, man, he's, he's doing it right. Talking shit, you know, the McGregor way. And, uh, I mean, if anything, his stock, if it wasn't already super high, you know, we were talking about the, the, the prices going into their, the prices going into his next fight, his stocks is just going to continue to elevate. Cause he, he does that. Like, you know, he, he, 
in a roundabout way, put Hawaii on the map. You know, we actually give a shit about all these other Hawaiian fighters too, just based on Max Holloway. And right. uh, when I say we, I mean like not not you and I, but I mean like the public. And uh, I don't know. I think that that's something to say. You know, and that's something that the your the, your your Italian boy should kind of keep in mind. You know, right. these other Italian fighters are putting their you know their stamp on this, and you know. He's you, miss, <laughs> you miss your opportunity, bro. Like uh, Hawaii is is the shit because of Holloway, and it will continue to be the shit because you know of performances like this. Right? No, you're right. You are right. So yeah, that pretty much uh, wraps up this recap. I'm super excited for the week to come up. We have fights Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we have the McGregor UFC 257 Poirier versus McGregor on Saturday night as well. We will be back uh, next Sunday, 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m., around that, uh, to recap that week of fights as well um so yeah guys uh we will see you later guys don't forget to like and subscribe to uh the fight bananas youtube channel as well as the fight analyst youtube channel this will be the edited version and all that will be up probably later today so you can guys can go check it out there like and subscribe we will see you guys later um also i will be doing a giveaway we got over 200 subscribers on the YouTube channel. So I will be giving away a Fight Island t-shirt. I'll be raffling it off. Um, probably tomorrow I will go live. I will give you guys all the details on my Facebook page. I love the hat <laughs> on the Facebook page. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, you guys know where to follow me. Fight Analyst on Twitter and the Fight Analyst on Instagram and Facebook. And where can everybody find you, my man? So my name is Joe underscore danger on Twitter. Uh, I also run a movie review website. Um, I do uh, pickups, reviews, a little bit of everything for a website called cinedump.com. I love I've been, it. I've been watching UFC since the blockbuster days. Um, this is just a small portion of my collection, but uh, follow me at uh, Joe underscore danger on Twitter, real Joe danger on Instagram, or just Google cinedump, C I N E dump.com. And uh, you'll find me reach out. Let's talk movies. Let's talk fights and uh, let's get on each other's nerves. All right. I like it, man. So we will see you guys next week recapping the fights. Until then, we will see you all cashing out at the ticket window. Until next time, you guys have a great day.